so I just finished up a little study this morning, right? And uh, the focal point of today's study was James chapter 4. And let me tell you what, guys, this is really real, man. I'm going to talk to you all a little bit about spiritual warfare because the reality of spiritual warfare in itself simply comes down to a lack of the renewal of the mind. All right. And let me explain this. OK, so let's let's turn to the scripture here real quick, because this is this is a game changer, man. OK, so James chapter four, verse one, it opens up with this. This is the ESV version, by the way. It says, what causes quarrels and what causes fights among you? Is it not this that your passions are at war within you? See, here's the thing, guys. When you become regenerated and you receive the Holy Spirit, you are a new creation. Right. And as you continue your walk with Christ, there has to be a transformation in your mind. Right. There has to be a renewal of the mind. And as you are renewing your mind, essentially what you are doing is you are turning away from your flesh and yielding yourself to the Holy Spirit that is now inside of you, the Holy Spirit that dwells inside of you. A lot of times we want to give demonic activity and demons more credit than they really should be getting. So let's continue on. Verse three, it says this, you ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your own passions. You see, this is basically saying you have selfish desires and you're asking for God to meet you and bless you to fulfill your own selfish desires. And this is the quickest way to have your prayers not answered. <laughs> Let me tell you. So this is what you have to do. And this is what the Bible really focuses on. You have to align your will with the will of God. And then anything that you ask, you will receive because you are now aligning yourself to the Holy Spirit that dwells inside of you. And you're aligning your will to the will of the Lord. And so anything that you ask in under that vein, you will receive it. But what, what happens is so many people come before the Lord in prayer and ask for things to fulfill their own selfish desires. Right. Most of the time to fulfill their worldly desires. Right. And then it says this. Continue on. Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. See, here's the thing, guys. You cannot be friends with the world and still be friends with God. We are living in this world, yes, but we are called to be different, right? We are called to be holy. We are called to be righteous. We are called to be set apart. We can't be friends with the world and still be friends with the Lord, right? And then going on, it says this, he yearns jealously over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us. He, he yearns jealously, jealously. This is the spiritual warfare aspect. The Holy Spirit that dwells inside of us gets jealous when we yield ourselves to the passions of our flesh, right? He yearns jealously. And then this is going on. It says this, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. God opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble. That was six. And then verse seven, submit yourselves, therefore, to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Guys, this is the key to defeat spiritual warfare right here, <laughs> right here. Let's look at Adam, for example. So Adam was living in the garden under the rule, under the protection, under the guidance of the Lord. He was submitting himself to the Lord. And that's all he had to do. All you had to do, bro, was just continue to submit to the Lord. But what happened? There was a desire to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And so by fulfilling that desire, essentially, he was saying, uh, Lord, you know what? Um, even though I've been rocking with you and your ways are better than my ways, I think what I want to do now is eat from this knowledge, or excuse me, this tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And I want to make my own decisions. And I want to really uh, take that accountability into my own hands. And I want to judge what I think is morally right and wrong. And so now, because you stepped out of the humility before the Lord, there was a price to pay for that sin. Because here's the thing, there is no just judge other than the Lord himself. We, and even speaks about here later on in the, in the scripture, there is only one lawgiver and judge, he who is able to save and destroy. You see, we don't have the capability to just judgely because we don't have the capability to save or destroy. We don't because we are not the creator. He is the creator. So by him being the creator, he is the only one who knows how to just judge 
And so by us taking that knowledge of good and evil and, and trying to discern what's good and what's wrong, morally correct and morally wrong, we are, fall, we, we, are, we are judging from a fallen state. So we can't do that. You see what I'm saying? And so either way, going back to the topic of spiritual warfare, verse 7 says, Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. you see, you want to conquer spiritual warfare? Simply humble yourself before the Lord. Submit yourself to the Lord. Submit yourself to the Holy Spirit that dwells inside of you. Resist the devil, and he will flee. Resist the temptations, resist your selfish passions, your selfish desires, and then they will no longer be there. They will no longer be the temptations. You see, here's the thing. The submission part comes first. Why? Because when you submit yourselves to the Lord, he will give you the strength to be able to resist. But if you're not submitting yourself to the Lord, oftentimes you won't have the strength to resist the devil, right? And you will oftentimes fall into that temptation, and fall into your own selfish desires. So, man, it's a game changer, guys. This is really what I wanted to hit on about that. It's, the spiritual warfare simply comes down to first submitting to the Lord, resisting the devil, and then he will flee. And that's how you win spiritual warfare. Just that simple. Submit yourself to the Lord, resist the devil, and he will flee. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get ready now. Uh, I need to go to the mall. I have a wedding coming up this weekend, so I'm pretty excited for that. But I'm going to try to get a blazer, maybe a couple other things. So let's get dressed. So first up, we have trousers from Lululemon. Next, I just have a plain black t-shirt. I actually got this from a company called Hill City. Uh, at the time, I was a tester for some of their clothing, and they sent me a black t-shirt to test out. And... Uh, Unfortunately, you can't get this anymore. I believe they are out of business. <laughs> so, but either way, I'm thankful, right? So, yeah, just a black t-shirt. And so it's a bit chilly today. Not too bad, though. It's about 60 degrees. Uh, so I'm just going to add this flannel. I believe I got this from Kohl's a while back. But, yeah, nothing too special here. And as for the footwear, I'm just going to be rocking some all-white Vans. Fun fact, Vans are probably one of my favorite shoes of all time. So you can't really go wrong with them. That's my opinion at least. And to top it all off, we have the Fisherman's Beanie. And that's the look for today.
What's going on, family? Woo! Finally made it back to the house, guys. And let me tell you, your boy is tired. Your boy is tired. However, I just wanted to check in with you guys because I wanted to uh, reflect on some of the things from the wedding. Guys, man, let me tell you what. This is my second wedding that I've actually been to as an adult. And the first wedding, my walk with Christ was pretty much non-existent. And so going to a wedding now with new perspective, it was so beautiful. It's just so beautiful, guys. The Lord is, is truly good. Here's the thing. It just, during the whole ceremony, I just kept being reminded of the love story of Isaac and Rebecca. And this is the point I want to touch on because when the Lord joins two people together, let no man separate it, right? What the Lord brings together, let no man separate. And see, we live in a society where it's so easy. It's so easy to get in a relationship and it's so easy to rush into something that the Lord did not ordain for us because of our own selfish desires. You know, it, like if I really wanted to get on a dating app today, like Tinder and swipe, I could probably swipe right, find somebody, date them for a couple of months maybe and propose and then boom, get married. But I did that. The marriage was, was something that I desired to have. And so I took matters into my own hands. And when you do that, it becomes more susceptible for men to separate that. It could be me that ultimately separates it. It could be her that ultimately separates it, or it could be an external influence that ultimately separates it. And so here's the thing. This is what I want to touch on. The Lord is truly faithful and he remains faithful to his promises. And when we're in a state of submission to the Lord and we're choosing to be faithful to him, it's not just about, okay, yes, Lord, I have faith in you and your promises, sometimes it really comes down to how long are you willing to be faithful for? You know, when I look at the story of Isaac and Rebecca and how the Lord's signature was just all over that, I want my marriage to do the same. When that time comes, I want me and my wife, when we get married and we're on that pulpit and we're saying our vows and we have witnesses and the whole shebang, I want everybody to look at that and say that there was no way that these two people could have came together if it wasn't for the Lord. Like, I just want all the glory to go to the Lord through the representation of my future marriage. And that's how it should be. And you see, here's the thing, guys. If you're, if you're approaching it with that mindset, you're going to have to play the long game. You're going to have to be patient. Because, yes, I could rush out today and go get married, probably. I, I mean, it, it, it wouldn't really take too much. But is that really something that the Lord ordained for me? And is that something that's really ultimately going to bring him glory? And is it really something that's going to be substantial and last? You see, that's the thing, guys. Let's, let's not be so quick to just rush into relationships just because we're lonely, just because we want to have sex, just because we want to satisfy our own desires. If we, if we could just stay patient and let the Lord be the Lord and remain faithful to him, his promises will come to fruition. You know, we, we get so caught up on wanting to wanting things on our own timeline that we oftentimes jump ahead of the Lord's timeline. His ways are better than our ways. And so when we take matters into our own hands, most of the time it just goes to crap. <laughs> Straight up, it just goes to crap. It just goes to crap. Because we are using our own working knowledge of the situation and thinking we're making the best decision in that situation. And a lot of times we'll settle at good when the Lord has something great. You know what I'm saying? Like we're, we, he, he, he trying to take us to Z, but we got hung up at, at D, you know what I'm saying? And, and we thinking, okay, D is it. And don't get me wrong. D might have been it for a certain season, right? Like that, it, it could have been a job. It could have been, uh, a, a living situation, but let's not take it into the next season, right? And so I'm kind of getting off topic here. Let's get back on track. I really want us to focus on just playing the long game. Let let time, let the Lord do his work through time. Let patience do its work. I'm telling you guys, there's so much reward when you are simply patient, when you are patient. And this is something that I used to struggle with myself. And this is something that the Lord is working with me on is getting to that place of patience 
and understanding his ways are better than mine, even though this is not the timeline that I want, even though my life isn't necessarily looking the way I want it to, I have to continue to be faithful in his promise because he has promised me things. And as long as I stay faithful to him and let time do his work and let the Lord do his work, it's going to be fulfilled. Those promises are going to be fulfilled. So guys, play the patient game, man, because let me tell you what, I want everybody to experience a beautiful love story type marriage, because not only are you going to be fully sustained and fully satisfied in that, the Lord is going to be in the center of that. And what the Lord joins together, let no man separate. I feel like we all really want that deep down. I feel like we really all do, but you just have to be patient for it. That's the thing just have to be patient. So that was my takeaway from this weekend, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Do me a favor, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And as always, stay prayed up, stay faithful, stay blessed, and I'll see you in the next one.